This is the best all-around mountain bike out there today. Come at me. 2020 Santa Cruz Tallboy version 4 CC. So the CC is the highest version of the Tallboy and it's very expensive. Retails around $8,500 brand new. So yes, cost is one of the things to consider here, obviously. But what I'm trying to say is that this bike, I think, is the best all around mountain bike. It is great at everything it does. It's not necessarily the best in each specific riding category, be it down country, which is the main category this is in, cross country, free ride, downhill, enduro, all mountain, trail. I mean, there's so many different categories. But on the spectrum of mountain bikes, so, so pure mountain bikes that are built to go in the mountains, not just on gravel roads, not just on paved roads, not just on crazy downhill, because you got to climb up them too. All around mountain bike. I think this is the best all around mountain bike out there. Now, one caveat in me saying this, well, two caveats. One is it's the high end expensive, best components, XT, XTR components. Uh, it's got carbon rims, upgraded Fox factory 36 with 140 millimeters of suspension versus the standard I think is a Fox on this build is a Fox factory 34 with 130 uh, millimeters of travel. So that, that does make it a little burlier, which is nice, and I'll get into. So besides the fact of the cost, that's one caveat. The second caveat, of course, is the upgraded root beer fork. Doesn't it look nice? So pretty, so pretty. But I think this bike is the best all around. Besides those caveats, yes, cost, is is a thing now if you bought a lower end tall boy um i think they have aluminum versions no 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 but um the lowest carbon version i think it's around 4000 4200 no. i think it's the carbon r my guess is it would ride pretty similar to this sure it's not going to be quite as light it's not going to be quite as nimble it wouldn't have the carbon wheels but this thing does everything really well so when you compare it in the category that it's in, the down country, I know people don't like hearing that word. Murder him! But in the down country, it's in there with the Ibis Ripley. It's in there with the YT Izzo, the Rocky Mountain Element, which I just demoed. Check out that video. And it's in there with a whole bunch of other bikes like that, the Transition Spur. In that category, from the bikes that I've ridden and the people that I've watched on YouTube, be it Pink Bike, Biker's Edge, they, they've done some good videos on down country. This is the best downhiller of, of all of those. On top of that, it's not lagging much behind on the climbing as some of those other bikes. And like, subscribe, and comment. Come on, man, I'm putting all this work and effort into this. I wanna hear from you. I wanna interact with you. I want you to shoot me down and say, this is a piece of shit. And I can recommend something else. I wanna hear from you. So please, please do that. But in the down country category, this is, I think by far the best downhiller. It gives you the most confidence. On top of that, because I have this Fox Factory 36 on it, it slackens the head angle out, the head tube angle a little bit. I believe it's around 65 and a half, 65.5 um, before this fork, with this fork, because it's a 140 and it's a 36. I think it's probably closer to 65, which is a really nice spot to be in for, um, for all things riding. And then the seat tube angle, I think is high 76s, 76.7 around there. So a nice uh, riding, it's not too slack, not too, too steep. So in the down country, I think it's the best downhiller. Um, and many other people would agree with me on that. And it's not that far behind on climbing. Yeah, the Ripley is, is fantastic. I actually haven't ridden a Ripley, but from everything that I've read and heard, the Ripley takes the cake on climbing. But it's not that far behind it. And like I said, I just demoed it against the Element, which is a really nice climbing bike. It, again, wasn't much far behind that either. So when we ride, we ride because we, we love it. We want to get the exercise. Downhilling, most of us prefer the downhilling, but some of us like the climbing too. And for me, I'm kind of one of those all around riders. I'm a decent downhiller, 
but I'm not crazy. I don't do big massive jumps. I don't try and, you know, kill myself when I'm doing jumps and whatnot. That is not how chicken sounds. Chickens don't clap! And really, really steep stuff. I kind of avoid the double black diamonds. I'll, I'll do most single black diamonds pretty regularly, whether I'm riding in British Columbia or, or here in Las Vegas or in, in SoCal or St. George. So this bike can handle all of those things really, really well. And I, I'm gonna show you some, some of the videos on the downhilling. The downhilling part of it and just the flowing part of it, this thing, the, the, the geometry is just right. Having this little bit of beefier fork uh, really helps with the confidence going downhill. So I love it in that, in that category. Yeah, if you put it in the cross country category, it's not gonna do very well when you compare it to a bunch of cross country bikes like the, there's the Santa Cruz uh, Blur, right? I've heard really good things about the Santa Cruz Blur. That's probably gonna do much better on cross country, but I can guarantee you this is gonna be a lot more fun on, on anything kind of um, flowy with a little jank with some gnar and certainly with some downhill, this is gonna handle it way better than that. So, um, and then you look at some of the other categories. I used to have a Yeti SB150, true enduro bike, fantastic bike, loved it. It actually rode uphill very nicely, did the flow nicely, went downhill incredibly well. But when you look at it compared to this, this bike can handle, it makes things a little more enjoyable all around because it climbs better, it flows better, it can uh, maneuver a little easier than the SB150 and similar bikes in that more enduro category. Yes, the SB150 crushes this on, you know, the, the gnar and the, the steep downhill stuff and, and, and bigger jumps. But other than that, you know, little segment within downhilling, um, this beats it in, in everything, like say maneuverability, uh, it, and it, it rides downhill very nicely. I rode it at the Lee Canyon Bike Park. Check out that video um, where I did a review and I rode this at a bike park. I don't know if I'd want to take this to a Whistler Bike Park, but at our local Lee Canyon Bike Park that had some steeper stuff, it handled really, really well. Like I had no qualms about it. So it can compete in like all of those different categories yeah, I wouldn't put it in free ride or I wouldn't put it in serious downhill um, riding, but in kind of the 90% the of riding, certainly that I do and other people, you know, most riders do, not the, the, the ex uh, racers and whatnot, but most people that ride and the type of trails they ride, this bike can handle it all beautifully and enjoyably. Every time I look to consider buying a different bike, I just think I'm not gonna get one that's more well-rounded than this bike. I could go something more like a Yeti SB130 or a, a pivot switchblade, right? Which are a little bit more all mountain, a little bit more uh, almost on the enduro side of things. So yeah, they're gonna be great. I'm gonna feel good about those a little bit more so on the, again, on the downhill, but they don't climb as well as this. They don't do the flowing as, as well as this does. And this can still do the downhill really, really well. I took it out just the other day. You're gonna see some footage right here uh, in DeBurbs in Las Vegas. There's some really janky, gnarly, there's nothing really steep that I rode, um, but it handles it all really, really well. No problem, you can pop off jumps really well. So it can do the bike part, the downhill stuff. It can do the janky stuff. It can do the flowing, nice kind of mostly cross country with a little bit of harder trail stuff in Bears Best here in Las Vegas again, or up at Mount Charleston, uh, 45 minutes north of here. This bike can even handle a quasi, a quasi, this bike can even handle a quasi cross country race. I rode it at the uh, Oregon 24. I, I did the 12 hour version, just riding an 11 mile lap as many times as you can in 12 hours. Each lap was around a thousand feet of elevation, mostly, it's probably about 30% double wide gravel, dirt, uh, and then about 70% single track cross country with definitely some, a little bit of gnarly stuff in it. But it handled it, I ended up doing 70 miles on it in about 10 hours of the, the 12 hours that I had. I couldn't ride any more than that because my, my butt was too sore. But this handled it beautifully, like no problems climbing up, down. I felt good, I, I was a little sore, of course. Um, I personally gave up before the bike ever would but it can handle that kind of, like I say, cross-country, all-day riding sort of um, adventure if you want. 
It can handle that. I wouldn't want to do that on my on my Yeti SB150. So um, I think the, the best way to sum up why I think this is the best all around mountain bike out there is Santa Cruz calls it the Downhillers XC bike, the Downhillers cross country bike. I think that sums up nicely. It kind of shows the gambit of downhillers basically can ride this thing and ride it like a cross country bike. It really fits all of that. And I think that sums it up nicely. So I wanna hear what you think. Comment below what you think is the best all around mountain bike. And, and, and hopefully it's something that you've rivet, ridden. You don't just say it because of the specs you've read somewhere online or a, a review. I, I wanna hear from you what you ride and if you think it's the all around. Can it do cross country races? Can it do um, flowy cross country trails? Can it ride all day long? Can you do downhill? Can you take it to a bike park? Can you do jumps off it? Now, I don't, I don't do very big jumps on this thing. You look surprised. Uh, but that's me again, that's not the bike. Um, I'll do like one to three foot jumps. That's about all I do, or drops, if you will. I don't do much more than that, but I'm sure it could handle it if you wanted to go further on it. So yeah, come at me. Tell me what you think is the best all around mountain bike out there that you've ridden personally. All right, until next time, peace. Oh, did it fall over? Oh.